stuff. And let's talk about yeah. the, the Taliban and al-Qaeda, because I think a lot of people don't quite understand where these two groups intersect. Mm. So, Kimberly, explain for us the Taliban versus the terrorists who actually want to perform these, you know, jihads, but the Taliban actually support their work as well, right? Of course they do. What we have in Afghanistan is a network of enemy groups who are tied by close personal relationships between their leaders. And when we look at the key enemy groups that our coalition is fighting in Afghanistan, we have the Taliban led by Mullah Omar, and we have the Haqqani network, which operates largely in eastern Afghanistan, now led by Siraj Haqqani, formerly led by his father, Jalaluddin. Jalaluddin wow, that's impressive, by the way. Can I just say that? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Jalaluddin Haqqani was actually uh, a, an anti-Soviet jihad fighter um, created uh, or, or really sponsored part of the war against the Soviets uh, in the 1980s and actually invited Osama bin Laden into Afghanistan uh, in, in the 1990s when he needed to uh, move headquarters, shall we say. He and Osama bin Laden had done fundraising before in the Gulf uh, together in order to create uh, funds for their respective movements. And therefore, what we see is a network of personal ties that link the Haqqani family to Osama bin Laden and therefore to al-Qaeda. Likewise, uh, we see personal ties and then, of course, political ties uh, between the Taliban led by Mullah Omar and al-Qaeda. So although we have different groups operating who have different leaders and slightly different agendas, al-Qaeda has a global focus. The right. Taliban has a slightly more narrow focus on Afghanistan. Regional. What we do see is that the first few steps that these groups need to undertake are actually shared in common. They need safe havens. They need uh, to establish a state in which they can produce their vision of law, order, and justice, and from which they can project power. And therefore, in the initial phases of this conflict, uh, one of the things that we've seen is that al-Qaeda is actually a leading recognizer of Mullah Omar and the Taliban as the legitimate government of Afghanistan and the legitimate leader of Afghanistan and sees Afghanistan as the cornerstone of its caliphate. And this is why, to get back to your first question, what are the pressures and dilemmas facing Obama's War Council? One apparent way out of this you know, really difficult project of finally beginning to fight a serious counterinsurgency in Afghanistan has been to shift focus away from the Taliban and toward al-Qaeda. And that is associated with Vice President Biden. Well, that's more of a counterterrorism versus counterinsurgency, right? And isn't that the what, what the, the strategy we've been employing for uh, well, eight years? Well, that's the problem. And in fact, this came up during the strategy meetings in February and March that they had, because this is the second go-round now. Um, the same questions were asked, and people from the Bush years who were still involved in the policymaking said, you like know. Like General Lute? General Lute and uh, people from the Pentagon, um, s when they heard this, well, why can't we just focus on al-Qaeda? Why do we need to try to reform the government of Afghanistan? It seems so difficult. Um, they were told by the people um, from the Bush years, that's what we tried to do, and it didn't work. 